to our presentation outlining the senior school course information. Now this information is presented in an online format. Uh, allows you to watch the videos, click on the links to the websites and look at the senior school course information book at any time that's convenient to you. My name's Shane Barnes and I'm the Director of Studies at Hope Christian College. Now we've been holding this event for many years now to help years 9, 10 and 11 students and their parents and caregivers find out how senior school works, how SACE works and how VET works. Now some of this information is not necessarily new for our current years 10 and 11 students but it will definitely be new for our current year 9s and their parents and their caregivers. Now our aims for this presentation, there are four of them. I'll give a brief introduction to the SACE, I'll briefly explain the subject selection process, and Mr Lungley will provide information specific to life in the senior school, and Mrs Alford will discuss VET and other alternative tertiary pathways. Now I'll begin by briefly introducing the SACE. Now it's the South Australian Certificate of Education. That's what SACE stands for. And it's the certificate that students will receive at the end of the senior school journey. And it's equivalent to the HSE in New South Wales or the VCE in Victoria. Now one aspect is that students need to gain 200 credits to complete their SACE, which, is, which usually translates to 10 credits each semester per subject. And now they can also gain credits by completing a VET course. Now there are two stages to the SACE. Stage one is generally year 11 courses, and stage two, generally year 12 courses. Now the SACE starts in year 10, with a compulsory subject PLP, which is a personal learning program. Now other compulsory aspects of the SACE, stage one or year 11 English, stage one or year 11 maths, stage two or year 12 research project, and students must also complete 70 credits in stage two. Now that's including a minimum of 320 credit or full year subjects. That's a possibility. Now there are some flexibilities in the SACE, uh, especially in terms of VET, which Mrs Orford will uh, discuss this in a separate video. Very quickly, there's a major difference between completing the SACE and being eligible for university. ATAR, it's an acronym standing for Australian Tertiary Assessment Rank. The ATAR is not a score, but it's a rank. For example, if you receive an ATAR of 83, that means your results, you rank higher than 83% of the country. Now to begin with, you need an ATAR to go to university. Uh, SACE, you're not eligible to go to university, you need an ATAR as well. Another difference uh, is that to earn the SACE, usually you must complete three subjects in the research project in year, uh, year 12, stage two. But to gain an ATAR, you must complete four subjects and the research project. Now if you want more uh, information, Mrs Orford or, or I, I can explain this in more detail uh, if you want. Now in terms of assessment, stage one, uh, are given a grade from A to E, and stage two, uh, grades for each subject range from A plus to E minus, so they're a little bit different. And for each subject, uh, there are performance standards that are set, so you know how to succeed. Uh, you know what you need to demonstrate to achieve a certain grade. And they're usually in terms of knowledge and understanding or analysis, application, reflection, communication. So how does assessment work in year 12, stage two? Now 70% of your grade comes from the work your teacher marks, that's school assessment. And that's moderated by the SACE board. And that's to make sure that uh, everyone across the state is given the same grade and it maintains consistency and reliability. And then 30% of the grade for every subject uh, is external assessment. And these are exams or investigations, performances, and these tasks are marked by experts at the SACE board. 
Now, more detailed information about the state is included in the Senior School Curriculum Information Booklet. Now, this booklet also contains information about every senior school subject to help students and caregivers make decisions regarding subject selection. Now, I strongly advise you to take some time to read this carefully to become familiar with the information. It's not just students, but also parents and caregivers as well. Read it together. In a nutshell, the curriculum booklet contains information on these things. Uh, the SACE, tertiary education requirements, the ATAR, VET and alternative pathways options, assessment and requirements for various subjects, and contact details for more information. Now the final main point I wish to discuss is the subject selection process. Now first of all, be informed about the process. Watch these videos. Read the Senior School Course Information Booklet. Ask questions of coordinators and teachers. Attend a subject selection appointment with someone who will uh, counsel you. Now current Year 11 students, you'll receive an email uh, very soon about selecting subjects for Year 12 next year. Now please return this emailed subject selection form by Friday of Week 6 and this will create the timetable and the line system for the rest of the college. Now subject selection counselling appointment will be set up for you in Week 5 or 6 before you return the form. Current years 9 and 10 students now you will receive a subject selection form by email late in term three. Now the subject selection counselling appointment will be set up for you in term four, week one or two, and you'll need to return your form by term four, week two. Now thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or Mr Lungley or Mrs Alford or even the subject teachers as well strongly encourage you to watch the other brief videos, to visit the various websites that are listed and to read the Senior School Curriculum Information Booklet. That's parents and students. Thank you for your time.